now you did speak or you mentioned the things in the calendar spread markets um, and that's one of the probably things I have in, in my history as a trader is I was trading a lot of commodity spreads, calendar spreads. I put a lot of effort into figuring out these synthetic markets, just creating cross market spreads, even things as lumber versus gold or you take the ratio of one market versus another or you take the DAX index minus crude oil. I just never got that to work. I don't know, maybe that's because of my research not being good enough, but I couldn't get it to a point where I'm satisfied with the trade statistics or the resiliency, which by the way, is very important as the robustness of that trading system that you're developing. It has to have sample size. It has to have a good solid foundation without too many parameters. The simple stuff has to work. If you make it too fancy and too complex, you're on the wrong track. So we went back to the commodity calendar spreads and what you see there is that the entire forward curve or futures curve, when you take all these possible spread permutations along it, um, they do have different momentum behavior at different points in time. So take crude oil, for example, which has monthly expiries. Um, you can create all sorts of permutations of spreads, the first minus the second contract, or the seventh minus the 10th, or the fifth minus the 13th. All of these are liquid. And what you find is that further down the futures curve, the trending behavior is way different and also more consistent than at the front of the curve, where obviously a lot of stuff is happening. The market is very reactive to whatever is happening in the world right now. Israel, Hamas, that conflict is moving the crude oil market, right? So that spread at the front is also much more volatile. It's very punchy. And that is because at some point, physics take over. It is a physical commodity. And the closer you get to first notice or less trade, the less you need to forecast anything. You know, it's a question of a, it's a contractual obligation that you have to either make delivery or take delivery of crude oil in Oklahoma um, at the price that is valid at that point in time. There's no longer any need to forecast storage or interest rates into deck 24 or deck 25. So this part of the futures curve further down the tracks is driven by different dynamics. And we found that exploiting momentum in all these markets, not just crude oil, but also net gas and the grains and the softs and, and some of the metal markets, there is an edge for us to be had. And it's so nice to put that stuff together with the single market system that we trade because they're uncorrelated. So we have two systems, both with positive return expectancy on a standalone basis. We also offer them on a standalone basis. And our fund, we combine them. 